I'm making this entry, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be the first entry I've made in uh, around seven days. <clears throat> I'm here to explain why I did not make a single entry last week, all right? And why there will be no digest tomorrow. Here's why. I just took a break. Imagine yourself putting in 14 diaries entries in one week. One of them uh, is a, uh, what you call this, an, uh, an 11 part uh, mega post okay, that spans several platforms, spread out over, spread out over several social media platforms. Right? <laughs> so I put in um, three independent entries to make it 14. So just to shorten. Uh, volume 3 of the diaries if I do that I'll be able to take the week off from the diaries and that's exactly what happened so after putting in the most entries on uh, in, in the history of the diaries I just had to take a break so and I mean by not pulling out my phone for uh, for uh, a small topic idea and well as you all know if you're a content creator burnout is your number one enemy so I'm trying to uh, lessen the chance of burnout by doing that right so but hey 14 entries is 14 entries <laughs> well I hope to I hope to do that again because we have to we have to explain something from the blog in any way possible now that advocacy friday is gone so that's my explanation on why there was no new entry to the diaries in any of my platforms and why there will be no digest tomorrow i said my piece youtube i said my piece You gotta admit, we are in dark times right now. I'm in the I'm in the dark right now. I'm wearing a face mask right now. But I'm inside. Uh, I'm I'm inside my own home. There's a sort of uh, symbolism to to my current situation. Some people don't know how to. Um, uh, don't have a plan yet to bounce back from from all of this <laughs> and some well some are just too chicken shit to air their opinions in this time of crisis in this pandemic more voices should be heard even though you're in the dark even though you're wearing this Your voice can still be heard. They can't see your face. They can't see your mouth moving, but they can definitely hear you. So, the next time you find yourself in the dark, and um, in a bind, in a situation that, well, that um, pushes you, pushes you uh, to a, backs you to a wall, all right remember you got a voice god gave you a voice use it i just couldn't get over what i uh what i had for dinner a few hours ago it's a uh, it's a japanese soup dish called ramen but with a little with a little filipino twist Instead of uh, the usual uh, flat, uh, thin meats, they put bagnet. Uh, it's called now. It's called bagnet ramen. 
uh, I wasn't actually able to uh, finish the uh, finish what I ordered, but uh, I found a way to uh, what you call I found a way to save it for tomorrow. So I put it uh, I put it in a I put it in a cooking put it in a sort of a cooking pot, and I just took I just took what I can just took what I can eat because well I couldn't eat. I can't eat anymore after 7.30 p.m. So that's the start of my fast. But here's a lesson you can learn from a bowl of ramen. Life has different flavors, consistencies, and and the occasional um, and the occasional bad taste. All right, and the occasional spiciness. You don't have to take it all in, okay? Just put it somewhere else and take only what you can. Take only what you can take. Ramen is like, uh, life is like a bowl of ramen, right? Like I said, uh, it's got different flavors, but you don't have to, but you don't have to take it all in, like I said before. So... The next time life comes to you in in all directions, in different flavors, good or bad taste, just take it like a bowl of ramen. Set it aside. Take what you can. Take what you can eat. Right? Don't um, take it all in. Never take life never take it all in especially when it comes to life so just think of life as a bowl of ramen and well probably life will be easier for you remember that linkedin i am so glad the pba is back Although the NBA is back and it just ended its season because of the NBA Finals, all right? We, we have a new NBA champion. It, it is the Lakers, pero... If you're, if you're a Filipino like me, you would still miss the PBA, all right? So, I'm really glad, I'm really glad the PBA is back. That goes to show you how, um, what's called this? An established name, a, uh, a durable brand. Um, can go a long way because well the PBA had to um, had to go through a lot of paperwork and a lot of um, convincing uh, the government that well Filipinos need their basketball again okay o nga may NBA pero iba ang PBA okay it's a homegrown basketball league it's the oldest it's the oldest professional basketball league this side of the Pacific. The PBA is also a branding lesson, all right? Let me let me be clear on this. The PBA is uh, it's one of the greatest branding lessons you will ever learn. Why? Because well, it's one of the most durable, one of the most durable and most recognizable brands here in the country. And well, with a little, um, well, with a little, um, but with, with durability, all right? With durability comes leverage okay they were able to convince uh, they were able to convince the government that the PBA should come back um, get its players get its players playing again and get the season going resume the PBA season they were able to do that and that's why they're back right if you could build a brand uh, over time it'll become so durable you can even use it as leverage Take a look at the PBA. That's why it's back. It, that's why it's um, was able to convince the government, uh, although it, not not easily. All right, it's able to convince the government at each of their attempts. That's why. That's why the season is back. That's why the PBA season is back. Okay? Imagine if you have a brand like that. You're able to convince um, very important people. Not not. Not just ac- the acronym VIP, but very important entities that, well, people need you. 
okay that people need you to uh, to act normal to go about with their lives to be successful the PBA is a lesson in brand durability learn from them Instagram learn from them I just took a screenshot of this um, this post by uh, Patrick but David and well it's basically a video a part of his YouTube video actually that says uh, that uh, he he's telling the story between uh, California and Florida of how the economic landscape of California is drastically changing because of its governor <clears throat> the way I see it it's um wow okay this governor is coming up with its with these bullshit policies that um yeah no uh, no sports leagues no theme parks but I don't know but uh while on the other hand Florida is welcoming businesses right but they both have the same health protocols right but Florida is welcoming businesses it welcomed the NBA and it kept Walt Disney World open all right there's a lesson to be learned uh, here for all of us politics for all throughout history has been well, has been cited as a major factor in uh, in an economy's collapse all right <clears throat> bad policies much more bullshit policies all right if you're not if you're if you're uh, if you're the politician running your locality you better be careful in how these policies are run okay how these policies are implemented how these policies are drafted because well it'll be your constituents that'll be um, that will that will suffer the most if it goes wrong well if I were uh, well I don't usually stick my nose into another country's business uh, as I said in the comment there California is on pace to becoming the poorest state in America because of these policies uh, yeah it, it's COVID it's it's a pandemic where there's a pandemic going on in the world but hey it's no reason to um, to draw up policies as stringent as that all right eh, dito sa Pilipinas eh. oh may, may, kalu, may kaluwaga na ngayon right may kaluwaga na ngayon because our because my country's government understands that the economy has to be restarted okay everybody's losing money not just the government even what well, nearly every small business in in this country is gone right because of the ECQ and the government and what well, the government was well was just in time to realize that if they realized that during the ECQ so they uh, they they uh, what you call this they thought of they thought of they thought of policies that will restart the economy but slowly right now politics okay politics have uh, have doomed economies before all right and the way I see it California will be the next economy to go down because of their policies okay observation for you TikTok I got that from Instagram actually the uh, the screenshot okay observation for you guys I'm gonna make this a quick one because um, I'm currently uh, well strolling down memory lane to my uh, anime roots right I'm I just uh, I just paused an episode of Great Mazinger right the spin-off of Mazinger Z I just had to uh, I just had to watch that show because it was never shown here in the Philippines okay especially during the year when I first became an anime fan the year was 1978 okay Mazinger Z was in its heyday here along with Voltes 5, Daimos, 
and others from uh, like Mechano Robot, yeah, mga ganyan. Uso-uso kasi ang mecha nun. The mecha genre war was at its heyday during the 70s. And it peaked here in the Philippines. Okay. So, yeah, sometimes you have to go back go back to basics, essentially. No matter what your passion is, no matter what your skill is, no matter what your work is, alright? No matter what your education is. Because, kaya nga basics ang tawag eh. The basics form the foundation of who you are as a person. Okay. Who you are as uh, as a professional in this, who you are as an expert, who you are as a fan, alright? The basics are very important. Do not forget to go back to that from time to time. That's why I watch these classics, alright? Because, well, over at my Otaku channel in, on YouTube, I review new animes. Right? I review new animes and recurring ones, of course. But, I always make it a point to go back to my roots. Right? Which is the mecha genre. Mazinger Z. What I fondly call the Mazinverse. Right? Since Grid Mazinger is a spin-off of, Maz of Mazinger Z. It's also Gona Guy's creation. Here's an important tip for you, TikTok. No matter how good you are at something, always go back to your roots. So that not only will it keep you modest, it'll also take you to where you want to be. So again, never forget the basics. I'm currently um, halfway done with, uh, with this... Uh, 24 hour stream that I'm doing I said halfway done yes it is literally halfway done because I'm only waiting for uh, six and a half hours more to complete it and you're probably wondering right now why I am doing it because well uh, live streaming is a uh, live streaming is well it's a very uh, it's a very challenging format and well if you don't challenge yourself you'll be out of this format in no time that's what I realized in um, probably a month already almost a month already uh, doing live streams almost every day every day double <laughs> but you gotta challenge yourself when it comes to uh, when it comes to things like this Especially when that thing is new to you, right? Especially when that thing is very new to you. The reason why I'm doing this, well, this 24-hour stream because I got to challenge myself, right? And if I didn't do this 24-hour stream, I wouldn't be doing this entry. Right? It inspired me to do this entry. This is no longer grind for me. This is fun. Challenges are also there to um, to not well. Challenges are basically there to not just um, test your resolve, test your sanity, test everything that is you. It is also there to uh, well spice up your life. Okay, you think sex is the only thing that can spice your spice up your life? Nope. Challenges also do that, right? So if you're new to something, challenge yourself, right? Turn the grind into fun, Twitch, right? Turn the grind into fun.